Hi there, welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to discuss the purpose and operation of a differential pressure transmitter. In industry, differential pressure transmitters is one of the most common devices used on process plants. It can be used for several different purposes, including measuring the difference between two pressures, measuring the level inside um, pressurised and vented tanks, and it can be used to measure flow rates along pipes. Differential pressure transmitters always come with two sensing ports. They have an HP side and an LP side. Obviously this means high pressure and low pressure. When using a differential pressure transmitter you always need to connect the LP side to the system that you expect to have the lowest pressure and the HP side to the system that you expect to have the highest pressure. They're commonly used on pump outputs across filters. So, for example, if you have a filter on the discharge side of a pump, you would put the HP side before the filter and the LP side after the filter. And the output of the transmitter will give you an indication whether the filter is blocked or whether the filter is clear. Differential pressure transmitters give an electrical signal output normally in a current range of 4 to 20 milliamps, which is an analog signal very common in process control. They can have digital outputs as well, but they're not commonly seen. They can have a digital output in the form of a heart protocol or a foundation field bus protocol, but for the vast majority of systems in industry today, they still use a 4 to 20 milliamp electrical current output. The reason that it's 4 milliamps is so that if you have an error with your zero point, then you won't think everything's okay when the system is outputting zero. It has an elevated signal of 4 milliamps, so that if there's a problem with the, the zero point, this will drift below 4 milliamps and it'll be an indication to the operator that there is an electrical problem. That's why it's not zero to 20 milliamps. So for a system where the differential pressure is zero, i.e. there's no pressure on either side, the transmitter will output 4 milliamps. For the system where it's reading the upper range value of the transmitter reading range, so for example, if the transmitter is going to read a range of between zero and two bar, zero being that the filter is clear and two bar being that the filter is blocking up, then this two bar range will correspond to a 20 milliamp output on the electrical signal. So 4 milliamps is zero, meaning the filter is not blocked. 20 milliamps would be the upper, ran upper range value, meaning that it's reading 2 bar. And then if we had a 12 milliamp output, this would relate to a 1 bar, which is halfway between. So the electrical output corresponds to the amount of pressure difference that is applied across the differential pressure transmitter. That's the way that this functions. The way that the differential pressure transmitter actually works, well, there's several, several different technologies that can be used. The most common type is a capacitive cell. These are usually found in the most common manufacturer of differential pressure transmitters, who are Rosemount. They are the by far the most commonly found manufacturer of differential pressure transmitters in process control and most of these use capacitive cells. The way that these work is basically on the same technology as a capacitor. So a capacitor is basically a measurement of the buildup of charge between two conducting plates but in the differential pressure transmitter we have three plates and there is one plate in the middle, one plate on the low pressure side and one plate on the high pressure side. Now what happens is there is a charge build, built up between the centre plate and the high pressure side plate and there is a charge built up between the centre plate and the low pressure side. Now once we start applying a pressure to the high pressure side, this plate in the centre which we'll call the diaphragm it will flex in the direction of the low pressure side. So the plate in the, the diaphragm in the center will flex towards the low pressure side. This will result in a buildup of charge between the center plate 
and the low pressure side. So this circuit will be built so that it can measure the difference in charge between the plates. If the more pressure that's put on the high pressure side, the closer the diaphragm plate will flex towards the low pressure plate and this will build up an increasing amount of charge, i.e. an increasing amount of capacitance. Now, a capacitance in this circuit is done using an AC current, but this, through some electronics in the head of the controller, is converted into a DC current, which will give you an output in your range between 4 to 20 milliamps. So basically, the electrical output is directly proportional to the pressure that's put on the plate. As I said before, there are different types of design in how these differential pressure transmitters work. You do have a strain gauge, for example, which will, when a force is applied, i.e. a pressure, the strain gauge will deform and the electrical resistance will change. This can also be used in electrical circuit to give you your 4 to 20 milliamp output. But as stated previously, the capacitance type is one of the most robust and most frequently used in industry today. And in future videos, we'll go on to discuss and describe other ways in which differential pressure transmitters are used. The next video will discuss how we can use a differential pressure transmitter to measure level, not only the level of pressurized tanks, but also the level of open air tanks. Also, please see the link in the description below for a free download of how differential pressure transmitters operate. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you in the next one.